ಸರ್ವೇವೀಸ್ವಾಯ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮ ಯಥಾಗ್ನೇರ್ದಿ ಕಾಶಕ್ತಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣೇಸ್ಥಿತಾಹಿಯಾಸ್ವಾಣಮ್ಯಹಂ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣಾಯ ಡಿಯರ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟುಡೇ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ನವರಾತ್ರಿ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಮಿ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಗ್ಲಾರಿಫೈ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮದರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ಸ್ Navaratri is joyous and glorious and it makes us feel close to God. Mother is so loving, forgiving and compassionate that we want to be in her company all the time. We also feel that mother understands us the best and does not find fault with us. Navaratri helps us to awaken the divine power that is within us. the mother that we worship on the altar is a symbol of that which is already in us in the form of the atman devotees revere mother by fasting chanting from the devi mahatmyam doing japa meditation and by observing many austerities the garba dance also has now become very popular and these are all very endearing ways to glorify the mother and be in her company because we are her children she accepts us and she accepts all the loving offerings that are made to her the way we know it shri ramakrishna explains that there are seven notes on a flute and we get a sweet melodious sound when we play on all the notes no one wants to listen to one boring monotonous note all the time so the divine mother allows us to worship her in so many different ways so that we can be absorbed in her thought for as long as possible the visarjan or the immersion ceremony constantly reminds us that the mother is eternally seated in our hearts and she can never leave her children alone the best examples of those who were constantly in the divine mother's company are our master and shri sharda devi the holy mother they are our durga kali lakshmi saraswati and infinitely more whatever name and form of god we worship mother sharda and master represent those forms of god master's words are so soothing comforting and stimulating because before the master left his body he said from now on i shall live in my photograph so what is there to fear holy mother too is ever present in the hearts of all her devotees mother used to say just call for me and i will come these the, there are three photographs taken of shri ramakrishna during his lifetime and we notice that in all of them master is in samadhi so what does this mean in every photograph master was taken even to the studio to take a picture and in those days they used to put a black cloth over their head the photographer and take the picture and by the time the photographer did that master was in samadhi and we see a beautiful radiant smile on master's face in all of the master's pictures also our revered big swami ji our guru ji swami shiva padanand ji maharaj used to say we see that in master's pictures the eyes are half open and half closed so there are beautiful meanings given to this and our swami ji used to say 
that master sees the world outside as well as the world within himself. And he seems to say to us, go in, go within yourself and see what bliss that is inside you. Everything inside is eternal. That means the Atman. And if you want peace of mind, go within yourself. Everything outside is transitory. So this radiant face of the master enjoying this wonderful bliss indicates to us that nothing in the world lives forever. Everything that is everlasting, that is beautiful and blissful is within us. So that is what master encourages us. He says that go within and see you will find that God is seated in your heart. While everyone saw the marble image of Mother Kali, for those of us that have been to the Dakshineshwar Kali temple, but for master, he used to say, I do not worship a stone or a clay image, but one that is pure consciousness. My mother is pure Satchit Ananda, existence, knowledge, and bliss absolute. Master teaches us that the living forms of gods and goddesses that we worship through the pictures and the murtis are not just images. They are living, they are pulsating, vibrating, and full of consciousness. So we can always be in the company of the Divine Mother, in the company of our Ishta Devata, who is living in all our photographs and images. It is very enriching to meditate on the master by looking at the master's picture. In fact, when we look at master and we know a little bit about master, we cannot know everything about him because master was God, but we realize that master is none other than the divine mother herself because master was so merged in the thought of the mother that he had become one with her. And if we remember, when master used to offer flowers to the mother, instead of offering it at, his, at mother's feet, he used to put it on his own head, indicating that, of course, master didn't calculate. He did it so spontaneously. And that putting it on his own head means there is no difference between the, the divine mother that he worshipped, as well as himself. Master used to say, I am the instrument and mother is the operator. I speak as she makes me speak. So through the master, we acquire infinite knowledge even about the nature of the divine mother. When we read the gospel, no way it says mother loves to kill people, mother wants to destroy. Naturally, mother will destroy the enemies or the evildoers or those that perpetrate uh, wrong values, wrong qualities, but she is there to protect her children. So we see when we read the gospel, and if master's words are none other than the divine mother's words, then the mother is full of love, compassion, forgiveness, understanding, and accepts her child from wherever he or she is. Master used to say, we are not made by a rubber stamp that all can be the same. There are different natures of people and all are mother's children. Our master and mother have often revealed their divine forms to sincere devotees. Once, Rakhal Maharaj, and that is revered Sri Swami Brahmanandji Maharaj. Swami Brahmanandji's photograph is here also. Once, Rakhal Maharaj was massaging the master's feet. Only two of them were in the room, in that little room in Dakshineshwar. And out of infinite compassion, the master asked Rakhal Maharaj to massage his feet. And master even said, there is a tangible result from serving a holy person. So while massaging the master's feet, what experience did Rakhal Maharaj have? He had an unusual experience when he 
actually saw the Divine Mother in the form of a young girl of seven or eight years old encircling the master's bed a few times and then entering the master's body. If we remember, whenever ma master had a beautiful vision of the divine, whether it was Mother Saraswati, Mother Kali, Mother Lakshmi, Lord Shiva, Lord Krishna, all of these beautiful forms entered the master's body. Therefore, we say he is Sarva Deva Devi Swarup, the embodiment of all the gods and goddesses. This vision overwhelmed Rakhal Maharaj and he realized that master is none other than the divine mother herself. And Swami Hari Premananda had an amazing vision of Shardama. Once, while he was massaging Mother's feet, Mother Sharada's feet, he thought, these feet are so thin and shriveled. Suddenly, a doubt arose in my mind, says Maharaj. Was the mother truly the mother of the universe as everyone claims her to be? Would the mother of the universe have such emaciated feet? I continued stroking her silently with this doubt in my mind. Then gradually, I came to feel that the feet were certainly not those of an old woman. They were well-formed feet of a young lady. I clearly saw two incomparably beautiful feet with alta, that is that red paste that they put on the sole of the feet, on the edge of the feet. That is the way mothers are decorated. Half moon shaped nails enhancing the beauty of the close set rounded toes. Gold anklets inlaid with pearls and precious stones adorned the feet. Whose feet have I been massaging? He thought, speechless with wonder, I tried to fix my gaze on mother's face. See, these are the things when we meditate on it. We cannot say that we can meditate only for two or three minutes. We can meditate for so long when we have this knowledge and we think about these beautiful revelations. So he said, I tried to fix my gaze on mother's face. I saw the image of Jagadhatri with a golden hue three eyes, four arms, and decked with numerous ornaments. There was a crown on her head and weapons in her hands. A sublime effulgence radiated from her. Before I had a good look, I cried out, Mother, Mother, and lost outward consciousness. How long I remained in that state, I cannot say. But when I gained, regained consciousness, I found Mother, that is Mother Sharda, stroking my back and saying, Hari, oh Hari, what has happened to you? Get up, get up. And it was as if nothing had happened. Mother herself revealed herself to her child who had this doubt in the mind. So master and mother have the power to awaken the divinity in us. By their grace, we learn to calm the restless mind and focus on God. Our faith and devotion to God increase and we feel the divine presence of the mother in our hearts when we meditate on them. Today, the world faces many challenges. People are without jobs and struggle to make ends meet. Others are so overworked that they hardly have time to pray or to be with their families. While some have lost their near and dear ones in these recent years, others suffer from ill health and hardly anyone to help them at home. So, in addition to all of these, danger seems to lurk in every direction. We always have to have security, lock our gates, put the alarms on. It is so almost, we can say, an unnatural way in which to live. Only by taking refuge in mother 
can we overcome all these difficulties? Mother gives, up, gives us hope when she says, what is there to fear? Whenever you are in distress, just say to yourself, I have a mother. She also said, whoever calls me mother, I am their mother. So all of us can just address mother, but we must feel that this is our mother. We must have faith in mother's words. I want to relate two very interesting incidents that were related by our own youth at the ashram. So uh, this mainly also to indicate that by being sincere and having faith in master and mother, they certainly come to our assistance and listen to our prayer. So the first one is about a young devotee. His name is Desh. And he was part of mother's ashram from the age of five or six years. He was very young. And he every Sunday came with his family. Of course, they are still at the ashram. They come regularly. He has now completed his degree. And he is working in Austria. So when we had our online satsang over these two and a half years, we asked him to record a talk because all the talks were recorded so that we could play it in the satsang. So this is a part of his talk. I just took a small part of it. He said, I grew up learning about Mother Sharda and was in awe of how many difficulties Mother faced. She suffered from poverty, disease, bereavement, and was treated poorly by her own relatives. Mother dealt with her problems in a calm manner, always exhibiting love, compassion, patience, and perseverance. She never made it known that she was in need of anything. Referring to the master, mother used to tell us, really, he is God himself. He has assumed this human form to remove the sorrows and sufferings of others. He moved about as a king walks through his city in disguise. So my child, lay the burden of your mind before Thakur. Tell him your sorrow with your tears. You will find that he will fill your arms with the desired objects. So Desh continues to relate. He says, Swami Vasudevananda asked mother once, Sometimes I get confused and do not find anyone to talk about my doubts to. To whom must I talk about it and what must I do? So mother advised him, keep a picture of the master always with you and think that he is with you looking after you. If you have any question or doubt, pray to him. You will see he will show you the solution in your mind. He is always with you. When you pray to him, and if it is necessary for you, you will find the answer arising within like a flash. If anyone prays to the master wholeheartedly, he listens and he arranges things accordingly. Master definitely listens to your prayers. Now, Desh says, I must admit, as beautiful as the story sounds, when faced with my own difficulties in my work life, I was skeptical about following this advice of Mother Sharda. How can Master, who lived over 150 years ago, know about our problems today? What magic solution will he give me that I have not as yet tried already. However, after some days, through sheer desperation, I decided to try it. As I sat for sadhana that evening, I pictured master sitting opposite me. And as one would do with a friend and a confidant, I began to complain to him about my problems and deadlines at work. Incredibly, he did not respond with the step-by-step -step guide on how to solve my problems as I had expected. 
However, the first thing that I noticed was an immediate sense of calmness. My negative mood vanished. My despair gradually turned into a gentle warmness of self-confidence. I arrived at work the next day with this new mindset and found that my problems suddenly became more manageable. I felt strong and confident. I felt that yes, whatever comes my way, I will be able to handle it. Mother also has taught me to be fearless and to have courage. We usually associate fearlessness and courage with Swamiji. Sorry. Because Swamiji had inspired a whole nation, he used to say, always say, I have no fear. Tell this to everybody, have no fear. Fear is death, fear is sin. And he used to say, wake up, O lions, and shake off the delusion that you are sheep. However, not all of life's problems can be approached with the daring ferocity of a lion. I realized by praying to the master and mother, calmness, patience, and sincere prayer are also very helpful. So we see that master does listen to our prayer and from within, he either gives us the strength to face it or he gives us the answer to our problems. All we need is faith. Swami Vivekananda says, my ideal can be put into a few words and that is to preach unto humankind their divinity and how to make it manifest in every movement of life. The more our bliss is within, the more spiritual we are. Let us not depend upon the world for pleasure outside. To be in the company of the Divine Mother constantly, we must cultivate qualities like love, patience, forgiveness, and the infinite other virtues. These are all in us. We have just to manifest them. So often we think that, you know, I always behave in this particular manner, but has it done any good to me or to those around me? Are we happy? Are we peaceful? Are we satisfied? If we find that the answer is yes, then it is very good. Then we go on praying and we go on making progress. But if the answer is no, then we have to reflect on how we think, how we behave, and how we can improve ourselves. We chant always, Om Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Matri Rupena Samsthita Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha Salutations again and again to the Devi who abides in all beings in the form of Mother. So motherly qualities are in everybody. This means that Mother is in us. We must become conscious of our thoughts, words and deeds and try to improve, try to transform ourselves as we improve and that's how we can come closer to God. The next example I want to relate is, it is the example from a grade 10 learner who was writing the Hinduism for Children examinations. In her essay on Holy Mother, she wrote, Sri Sharda Devi is the embodiment of knowledge. Mother says, even the impossible becomes possible by the grace of God and through devotion. I found this to be true. I was not good at Afrikaans. After I started coming to the ashram, I learned about how, how hard Mother Sharda worked and how she learned the Bengali alphabet on her own. I, beg I began to think about how I can improve my marks. 
I thought if mother who is so called not educated can teach herself, then why can I not learn and improve? I began to think again. So for two hours every Friday, I sit with my Afrikaans notes and study in front of mother's picture so that she can help me. I used to be very loud. I used to be loud spoken, outspoken girl that never used to take into, the, into consideration the views of others. But over the years, I have learned to be polite and soft spoken. I try more and more to help others in whatever way I can. I do not gossip or carry stories anymore, but rather try to improve my own self so that I can be a person who is friendly with all. However, I'm still working on it. It is easier said than done. This is because of mother's last teaching. And we remember mother's last teaching is, if you want peace of mind, my child, do not find fault with others. Learn to make the whole world your own. No one is a stranger, my child. The whole world is your own. So this particular saying has inspired me. Also, Sri Sharda Devi says, do not fear. Master is always behind you and I am also with you. Why must you fear when your mother is with you? This teaching of mother really gives me hope. I am not a very strong-willed person. I am scared of many things like ghosts and snakes and some of my teachers. At night when I go to sleep and happen to think of the ghosts, then I remember that mother is with me. So when God is with me, why should I fear? I should fear nothing because nothing is greater than God. I have learned that beauty is not only on the outside. Mother was so beautiful on the inside as well as on the outside. In order to be truly beautiful, one must be truthful, patient, loving, and kind to all. So I just thought these are such beautiful examples. We're not saying that these children are perfect. They are learning, but looks definitely some impression has been cast in their mind, some uh, thing they have learned. And it's clear that their faith in master and mother are so strong. So these practical examples inspire us with the deep conviction that God does exist and is ever present in our hearts. We noticed that both the youth used pictures of master and mother to overcome their challenges. So instead of worrying or being sad and miserable, that doesn't help at all, we must pray. It is, as, it is advisable to read any sacred book for today, definitely the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna is as it is said, the fifth Veda. The Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna is a magical book. It is such a beautiful scripture. We must read it. We can chant mantras. We can sing devotional songs when we are sad, unhappy, feeling down. It's better to do that. Better to be occupied with some selfless service. And God from within us will take away that sorrow and fill us with joy. Master says that, as we go on pouring clean water into a jar of dirty water, the dirty water soon overflows and we will have only clean water. If we fill our hearts and minds with strong stimulating thoughts, we become calm and composed and are filled with renewed energy. Master says, do not let worldly thoughts and anxieties disturb your mind. Do everything that is necessary at the proper time and let your mind dwell on God. Shardama also says, the easiest and best way 
to solve the problems of life is to repeat the name of God silently. Master and mother advise us to pray regularly every morning and evening. Regular sadhana helps us to focus our minds and through concentration, whatever work we do turns out well. Of course, we know that Mother Sharda used to get up at three in the morning and do japa. And when people used to ask her, why are you doing so much of japa? We know that you see God, you are God. So what Mother used to say, I have initiated so many people. I don't know who is doing japa and who is not. I'm doing it for their sake. So I know our big Swamiji used to say, big, our revered Guruji, the best gift you can give your Guru is to do your sadhana regularly. Guruji doesn't want anything from us, but never miss your sadhana. Morning and evening japa is the best way we can serve our Guru. How can we maintain good thoughts and vibrations after attending satsang like this? After going to a holy place, the master explains, as cows, after filling their fill, lie down quietly at a place and chew the cud. So, after visiting a sacred place of pilgrimage, you must gather the holy thoughts that arise in the mind while you are there, sit down in a solitary place and think about them until you are immersed in them. Do not devote yourself to the pursuit of the senses which drive away the higher ideas that come to your mind. So our revered Guruji also used to say, whenever you come to a holy place, go to the shrine and meditate. Repeat God's name. We take so much from a shrine, so much we take from a holy place. What can we do to give back? Fill it again with japa. Fill it again with pure thoughts. Fill it again with divine vibrations. So anybody enters, the place is still full of vibrations. The Isha Bhastya Upanishad says, cover your whole perception with God. Feel that God is in everything. So being in holy company, and we know that saints, they always only see God. We know that when master used to sit in the room, he used to say, you are all seated here, but I see clearly that all the males are Sri Ram and the females or the mothers are Mother Sita herself. Life is beautiful if we know how to live it. Sadhana, meditation, keeping holy company and reading the scriptures remind us that God is everywhere all the time. So, once a devotee asked Mother Sharda, Ma, how must I call you? What must I address you as? Mother Sharda answered, you can call me Radha or Sita. You can chant the name of any god or goddess that appeals to you. If not, simply say Ma. That will be enough. I will answer your call. May Mother Sharda remove all inauspiciousness and fill us only with pure auspiciousness. May she fill us with strength, with energy, with the right frame of mind to help us cope with the challenges of, these, of our lives. And may she fill us with infinite power through prayer. Hari Om Tat Sat.